Finding inspiration for the next project wasn't easy this time, especially when scanning through recent SODDs. However, while exploring different categories, I stumbled upon this honorable mention that showcased an amazing canvas mouse move animation across their entire website. Inspired by this, I decided to rebuild this effect only using JavaScript. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create these dynamic blocks and add interactivity to your website with very basic JavaScript. No external animation library is needed. If you enjoy these tutorials, please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, let's get started with the code. Let's set up the basic structure for our web page. We'll begin by adding a blocks container div. This container will hold all the dynamic blocks that we are going to generate and manipulate with JavaScript. Next, I'll set up a wrapper for all the content. To keep the website from looking too empty, we'll add a simple navigation with a couple of links. Finally, we are going to include a gallery divided into two columns. In each column, I'll place several images to bring some visual interest to our setup. And that's it for the HTML. Let's move on to the styling. We'll start by resetting the default margins and paddings for all the elements and set their box sizing to border box. Next, I'll set the font family for the entire body. For images, we'll apply a width and height of 100% and set the object fit property to cover, ensuring our images fully cover their containers without losing their aspect ratios. Moving on to the navigation, I'll position it fixed at the top left of the viewport, stretching across the full width. The padding and flex display properties help space out the items evenly. For the links, I will define some basic font styles. First, we'll configure our blocks container to fill the entire viewport. We position it fixed at the very top left of the page with dimensions spanning 100% of the viewport width and height and we set overflow to hidden to ensure no internal content spills out. Within this container, blocks will serve as the actual space where our dynamic blocks are displayed. I have chosen a dark background color. To ensure complete coverage and allow for a slight horizontal overflow, the width is set to 105% of the viewport width. This extra 5% width prevents any empty space on the sides as blocks are dynamically generated and manipulated. The container uses flexbox to lay out the blocks in a wrap pattern, aligning them from the start both horizontally and vertically. Each block is styled to be 50 pixels square with a very subtle border. We also include a transition effect on the border color which will come into play when a block is highlighted. Finally, the highlight class changes the border color to a vibrant yellow, making any highlighted block stand out distinctly against the dark background. We'll add and remove this class on the blocks on mouse move. Lastly, the content and images setup. The content area sits above the block layer and is not interactive due to pointer events none. The images are neatly organized into two columns with significant gaps. And the second column is offset to create a staggered visual effect. I will also define some more basic styles to the images. Now let's get to the main part, JavaScript. First, we set up an event listener for when the DOM content is fully loaded. Inside this, we begin by grabbing our blocks container element. We then define the size of each block and calculate the number of columns and rows needed to cover the screen based on the window's width and height. With these dimensions, we compute the total number of blocks by multiplying the number of columns by the number of rows. This ensures that our grid will completely fill the viewport without leaving any gaps. 
Now let's dive into the create blocks function. Here we loop through the total number of blocks. For each iteration, we create a new div element, assign it a class of block and give it a unique data attribute called index. This index helps us identify each block. Each block is also equipped with an event listener that triggers when the mouse moves over it, calling it the highlight random neighbors function. The highlight random neighbors function plays a key role in our interactive animation. Upon being triggered, it fetches the index of the current block from its dataset. Using this index, it calculates the position of potential neighboring blocks, those immediately adjacent, including diagonally. We ensure these neighbors exist within the grid's bounds and are indeed direct neighbors by comparing their column positions to prevent wrapping across rows. When a block is highlighted, we also randomly highlight one of its valid neighbors. This randomization is achieved by shuffling the array of neighbor indices and selecting one. Each highlighted block, including the neighbors, will have this highlight removed after 500 milliseconds, creating a brief flash effect. The shuffle array function uses a shuffle algorithm to randomize the array of neighbor indices efficiently. This ensures each highlight fails spontaneous and varied. Lastly, after defining these functions, we call create blocks to fill our entire container with the interactive grid upon page load. This approach not only visually engages, but also demonstrates the power of JavaScript in creating dynamic interactive web experiences. Hope you find the video helpful. See you in the next one.